In the fast-paced world of racing, women have steadily been making their mark and breaking barriers. The Ladies of the Oval program, run by Randy Butler and Sam Shaw, is a platform that aims to showcase the achievements and empower women in this thrilling sport. Partnering with the Stickers and Scuffs podcast, this remarkable collaboration brings to you the stories of successful female racers who have defied the odds and left a lasting impact on the racing community or just getting started. At the heart of the program is a commitment to empower women and provide them with equal opportunities in racing. Through their initiatives, Randy and Sam strive to create a supportive and inclusive environment for all women racers. By shedding light on their accomplishments and celebrating their achievements, the program aims to inspire future generations of women to pursue their dreams in the racing industry. We are making significant strides in showcasing the accomplishments of women in racing. From Marley Owen to Amanda Balson to Jessica Power and Chantal Kalika, these remarkable women are leaving their mark and paving the way for future generations. Through our collective efforts, the program will promote empowerment, inclusivity, and equality, ensuring that the world of racing becomes a place where women can thrive and make history. Support Ladies of the Oval on social media, on Instagram, and on Facebook just by searching Ladies of the Oval. Also consider donating to their cause and providing sponsorship for women in 2024. Stickers and Scuffs has made our donation and you can too. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our Ladies of the Oval Month. As we continue here, we're really excited to bring in Keisha Zimic. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Pronunciation. Um, from the mini truck division out at uh, Full Throttle Motor Speedway. Also, I believe you run uh, mini trucks, uh, mini mini trucks at uh, Grand Bend, maybe at a yeah. time or two. Um, but you're on the show for Ladies of the Oval Month, and you are a well. This is this is. A bit of royalty here, Graydon, because she is one of the <laughs> sponsorship winners for the Ladies of the Oval. So, Keisha, thank you so mm -hmm. much for joining us. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to be on the show today. Oh no, it's it's our honor to have the champion uh, of the uh, <clears throat> you know Ladies of the Oval because not everybody gets a sponsorship from them. How did that feel getting that uh, that message, and and what does it mean to you having? Oh. A, an organization that Randy and Sam put together that champions women in racing. It means the world to me. It actually was my second year, um, like applying. So the first year I did make it in, which is fine. They chose amazing women. Um, and then being the top three, like not only did I win, but also Cassie Howard and Tina Rowling also um, won this year too, which is amazing that they're able to sponsor more than one of us ladies. Um, but yeah, it means the world to me just to get, you know, our names out there to obviously encourage women in racing in general. I'm um, just putting more voice behind us. It's just, it's just, yeah, it's an honor to be one of the ladies who won this year. That's for sure. It's pretty cool to see uh, across all the different racing disciplines uh, in Ontario, especially there is a great representation of, of female racers. What's it like to be a part of that uh, elite club? Yeah, it's incredible. And that's one thing I love about the ladies of oval is it just encompasses so many different divisions, so many different tracks, like, you know, oval, dirt, drag. It's like, it's just so incredible to be part of yeah their uh, world. That's for sure. <laughs> well, obviously, we have you on for the ladies of the oval month, but, um, you know, it doesn't matter um, that uh, it, we're we're having you on just for this this specific month because we could have had you on at any time because you were a front runner in the mini truck division out of full throttle motor speedway. You've been uh, able to take it to uh, a good buddy of ours named Mason Culver. Mm -hmm. And it's been a really nice to see you guys compete and, 
And uh, now you've got uh, some other fresh names coming into the, to that series. And um, we actually had a former mini truck racer on last week with us, um, uh, McKenna Robson as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's something about this mini truck division that clearly it is exciting. It's fun. The competition is great, but you guys all have a great time in it as well. So yeah. first off, Keisha, how do you, how do you get, to the mini truck division where did your racing history start so it, um, a little bit older than most of my racing family so i actually started when i was 13 14 in the junior racing league program at delaware speedway so that's how i originally got started um, of course i aged out faster of course than everyone else move up into the mini truck division a lot faster um, I started my mini truck career at Grand Bend Speedway, actually, because I used to race at Delaware and Grand Bend in the junior racing league program. Um, and I obviously moved um, up to the mini trucks and I've been there. I think it's been eight or nine seasons now. Um, it's actually been quite a long time now that I think back on it. Um, and yeah, so mainly uh, full throttle is yeah my home track. I love it so much. And then, yeah, we still dabble at Grand Bend as well. <laughs> it's pretty Cool to hear that you you've got the the track like Delaware, the all out speed, uh, Grand Bend, which is uh, kind of known for it, it, its kind of tight tight racing, and and of course the high banks and and tight racing of Varney. It's uh, they're very three three very uh, distinctly different tracks. What's it like to uh, to have raced on all three, and and what's as you said. Full throttle is your home track, but uh, is that the one that that suits your style the best? I would say yes. Like originally, when I just did the trucks in Grand Bend, that was a challenge enough just with the learning curve. But definitely finding full throttle and bring my truck there definitely found my groove. Like I love it there, and yeah, like the risk coming out of three and four, I just love that whirlwind and the adrenaline that happens with it. And then with us traveling to a little bit to Flamborough, like I also really enjoy Flamborough. I'd love to bring our mini trucks as well to Sobble. I've only raced there in the junior late model, um, yeah. but that would be a blast as well. I always love trying new tracks and I wish we would go back um, to having a little bit more of a traveling series. We used to do that more in the junior late models, um, but I would mm -hmm. be open to doing that in the mini trucks again too. That'd be so much cool. fun. I love that idea. I think I think for a division like the mini trucks, it is definitely something that fans would absolutely go crazy for. Um, and I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm local to to Sunset Speedway, but you know, I'd love to see mini trucks there. I'd love to see them oh, yeah, instead of so Flambro. Yeah, there, th those are, are cool. I mean, Delaware is not likely ever going to get them um, to that level because of how big they are, but or how big the track is. But mm -hmm. it it's. It's always re remarkable to us that uh, people come in and they and they they choose to be racers. So, mm -hmm. because that's really what it comes down to, right? Most of us don't oh, yeah. just walk into it. We we kind of choose to. But was there ever a time, Keisha, where you were like, "This isn't going to work," or were you always just, "No, no, I want to be a racer and I'm going to do this"? Because you said eight or nine years that you've been racing, and and it's been the mini truck division. Have you thought about going to another division? I have considered it. Um, so yes, yeah, it's been eight or nine years racing at the junior or sorry in the mini truck but i've actually been racing i think this will be actually my 12th year as a, wow. as a whole um but yeah i've definitely considered other divisions it's more lean towards like the financial aspect that's just kind of more been holding it back um but i definitely mm -hmm. love their hot rod series like i think that is such a cool and like really nice looking class <laughs> mm -hmm. um and then yeah true i love like i wish i could race at delaware speedway too because that's just a closer track to where i live um, when they had the big trucks there, I would have loved to do that. Um, but even the V8 stocks, I really like what they've been doing with that class too. So that'd be a fun thing to dabble in. Um, yeah, it's more, unfortunately, finances. Um, but the people I race with in the mini trucks are amazing and like such a huge variety of ages and people that it's, you know, it's still enjoying um, something to do after, you know, eight or nine years. It's awesome to see this people moving those, through. This is, this is one of the, those things that I don't think people are aware when you say ages, you are not kidding. You were racing yeah. with young kids and guys, guys and gals, you know, from all ages. I believe it was your oldest racer might be 60. Was it 66? He's actually 76. <laughs> 76. Whoa. Yeah. We call him Richard Petty. He is. His name is actually Rick. He's amazing. He is an amazing person and he's so much fun to race with too. And I give him 
huge kudos. I hope I am racing at that age. <laughs> Absolutely. 76. And then you get the young kids. You got uh, Del Freiberger who's coming mm. in and oh, he's definitely, yeah, definitely has got uh, a future in this racing deal. Oh. Um, but you, you've obviously been able to see different racers come in and out of the division. Um, it must say something about these, these trucks that people are able to come in them and succeed and move on. But you do have to have veterans like yourself that bring people in and they get their experience racing against mm -hmm. you. So is, who is this somebody that you think, uh, you know, we talked about Dell, but who is somebody that uh, in the mini truck divisions that we need to watch? Oh, definitely the Sims, like the brothers. So Hayden Sim and Carson Sim. Actually, the Sims helped me get me started into Junior Light Models back 11 years ago. Um, but both of them as brothers are incredible drivers. Like, they can drive anything. So I, I definitely think if they ever move up, they'd be someone to watch for. If not, they're my favorite competition um, to race with. Like, Hayden and I can race side by side for laps. I trust them so much. Um, of course, I know Mason's thinking about, you know, dabbling out of mini trucks but if he comes back obviously he's another one um to watch there um as well but even the gertz there's rick or not rick's the dad uh caleb and quinn gertz though those are also really good strong competitors there as well that are younger that are coming up into full throttle traveling a little bit more too that are amazing drivers yeah it's so cool to see the young ones getting up there with us yeah, it's definitely true. I mean, we like to see, and there's been a couple of, what's nice is, is seeing the race videos because I mean, for some of us that aren't able to get out there, like myself, aren't able to get up to full throttle there very often. Uh, other people that I know, uh, like in this podcast, have raced on full throttle. So what is about uh, what is it about the track that you love? Because, man, it is, it's just, it. we've talked about this before. Sure, <sighs> sure, it's it's weathered and, and it's old and, and all, but it's it's got them probably some of the best character of a racetrack in Mm -hmm. really anywhere so what's your favorite part about uh, full throttle oh definitely the atmosphere the people there are so friendly and so welcoming um especially paul like the track owner um he's really good to work with like as a division and as a friend like he's really helpful um just kind of keeping everyone motivated and everyone that comes in he's so friendly um everyone who works there is really nice like, even the announcers that's pretty more like the atmosphere just makes you so much more of like a family and welcoming there even if you're a traveling division it's like my favorite, especially the crazy divisions too, like crazy trains. That's, you know, <laughs> something <Yeah>. worth watching. <laughs> for me, uh, when I, I came to full throttle for the first time and, and was made my way out onto the track and then you kind of drop down onto the mm -hmm. banking. It's, it's pretty crazy to really put in perspective like that is daytona steepness mm -hmm. on a quarter mile track uh for for the mini trucks they're they're obviously a physically scaled down vehicle mm -hmm. uh which makes full throttle a little bit more like a super speedway in yeah. terms of the <laughs> overall comparison to the size of the vehicle what's it like racing a mini truck there is it a very momentum based are you flat yeah. out the whole time um yeah that's sort of like um based and yeah like when you're up to speed yeah you're full throttle all the time um which is yeah definitely momentum based but it's so cool because i don't think people realize how banked it is until you walk out onto the track yeah it's so crazy but yeah that's why i love it because you can feel the banking especially the three floor if you just hit it perfectly you just kind of like swoop down in there and it's oh the blast like you're just this far away from the wall every time so much fun <laughs> yeah it really <laughs> is and that's <laughs> yeah that part too but like when i mean you're belted in tight obviously but like mm -hmm. when you get in and then you're you're in the seat but like you're you're against the oh, left yeah, side yeah it. until you start winding it out like it's it's such a cool thing to actually get that feeling of what racers at daytona feel like when they're going mm -hmm. through the corners of what it's really like to be basically driving sideways on like the yeah. roof of somebody's house almost yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, keisha's so gonna fun. take us take keisha's gonna take us for a lap around full throttle what is the line that you're taking now obviously we don't want to give away secrets <laughs> here but for for somebody because you're gonna have you're gonna have touring series we've seen the oscar hot rods come mm -hmm. out there and play um, you've got outlaw midgets that come out there and play. Um, there is a trick to this track. So how is Keisha take herself around full throttle? Yeah. So usually 
Um, like coming into one, two, I kind of start high, then go in deep low. You feel like there's this one specific groove you can hit, and then there's a bump that you like to straddle. I like staying kind of like more the midline on the back stretch, and then kind of arcing into three, four. There's like a perfect sweet spot where it kind of like just takes your truck with you, and then kind of going close up again to like the front stretch wall, and then just kind of taking that back into turn one. Um, but it's really just letting the truck kind of go where it wants to as well. Cause if you're putting obviously in too much fight, then you're going to lose momentum and everything. Um, but yeah, I find it, thankfully I've been racing there for a while. So I find it quite, um, easy to go into, but I find most divisions seem to have the same sort of line, obviously for the bigger trucks and like the late model stuff, they have to take wider corners and everything, but it seems to be that just kind of swoop into the corners kind of helps to give you the little extra momentum. It feels very, I mean, it's true to a lot of short tracks, but the, the rhythm base to it where, uh, and as you just sort of speak to it, you're sort of one with your race vehicle where it has kind of the rhythm where like you mm -hmm. let it drift up and that sort of thing. Yeah. But uh, it, it is very uh, rhythm oriented. Would it, it am I right in saying that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And definitely being consistent. Yeah. If you even, you know, make that one mistake, it's crazy how fast you can catch up to another um, competitor or another competitor can catch up to you <laughs> yeah it, it really exposes that where like if you do have like kind of an off lap or you hit traffic mm -hmm. at a weird time yeah. or you miss your mark you're going to pay for it because people will be all over you instantly for oh, sure 100%. Mm -hmm. well and then and then it's the, like the, the other thing is the, the navigation as we talked about like you said momentum based so you know you obviously have to know and, and plan I would seem you have to kind of plan your moves ahead of time then because mm -hmm. you're you're gonna be racing in which I didn't I mean I'm still very new to understanding you know a lot of different divisions but I didn't realize mm -hmm. what you talked about earlier which is you can have pack racing in oh, this yeah. division which is absolutely insane when you think about it but um so ultimately you have to make the decision about what's gonna be happening a lap in advance a couple mm -hmm. laps in advance sometimes and you're racing so close with other people. How do you navigate? How do you make your decision? I guess is what I'm saying. Is it, is there any sort of, I <laughs> mean, like take it back to like the NASCAR 2006 total team <laughs> control game where it's like, <laughs> all right, we're all going to go together. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, because obviously you have to be able to make the right move at the right time. Mm -hmm. How do you make that call? Because you're kind of, I've seen it side, your guys side by side, side by side, side by side. So is there a third groove that you can get into? Is it you kind of have to move people? Is it you have to kind of wait your turn type of thing? Like, I'm very curious about the actual, like, making the pass mm -hmm. to try and win because it 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 seems like it's a very complicated game out there. Yeah, sometimes definitely, does, especially when you're on an even playing field with some drivers, you're kind of just hoping that they'll make mistakes if you're evened out. Cause that's really, cause if not, you're like the distance is the exact same until someone makes a mistake. If you're at the even speed. Um, so just, yeah, trying to planning it out. And then if they make a mistake where you're going and not letting off, cause if you make a mistake, then, then you've lost all your momentum to pass them as well. Um, thankfully usually at starts, we can kind of like freight train, like you pick the right line and hopefully you pick the right one and everyone goes. Um, sometimes you can get away with going a little bit higher or a little bit lower on the back stretch. Um, is where usually I can find that I can pass people a little bit easier at the starts. Um, yeah, some of it's just luck. Like if you pick the wrong spot, someone checks up, like you're not able to get, you catch up to the rest of the pack as, you know, as fast as you want to. Um, but yeah. And the, the, the amount of laps you guys are running, um, you like it or do you want to go a little bit more? Like I'm going to just, I'm curious about this because we've seen these invitationals, you know, where mm. sometimes people like they double the laps or they triple the laps or something like that. W do you find the distances are enough or would you like to see a little bit more or something crazy? Like yeah. where you guys, you know, like I'm just saying, I'm throwing this out there. If you're racing the same track all the time, you know, I always mm. wonder about, okay, this race you're going to do, it's you're racing the opposite direction and that see how much, see how much that throws people <laughs> off. Right. Oh my gosh, that would be so much fun, but so crazy at the same time to go backwards. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, stuff like that. So, so what do you think about the race distances right now for the mini truck divisions? Like, is that as much as you can kind of, the, the, the car can go or the truck can go? Mm -hmm. So for usually for Barney, we usually do more, yeah, like 20, 25 laps, which is yeah. usually a, a good feature. 
We probably mm-hmm. could do more. We actually do used to do at Grand Bend Speedway like twin fifties for Canada wow. Day. And that was a lot at Grand Bend. <laughs> oh my gosh. I remember I did double duty, so I did it in junior late model, got out and then jumped into the mini truck and did the fifty. That was a lot. So I think we could do the fifties. Um, I don't know how it would work at full throttle. I think that would be like quite a long race. Um, mm-hmm. I know when we go to Flamborough, I think we got a 15, 20 lap feature and that felt like forever. So it really just well, yeah. depends on the track. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause it's a little bit bigger, but how do you, how's the adjustability? Because as we just talked about, you're racing at the same track every week. Now all of a sudden you go to Flamborough and it's completely different. So how yeah. does your adjustability, like how do you, how do you make the changes between full throttle and, and flambro because they they cannot race the same at all can they Mm-mm. yeah they're definitely completely different and it's fun too because we only do flambro once a year yes <laughs> and then yeah we don't get too much practice either so you're kind of just like making the best of the practice that you have um we don't change too much it just kind of more depends on like the day and the weather in between it's just more of like me mentally preparing for that track is more of the main changes but I think it's so much fun because it's just so different than what I'm doing every weekend. Yeah, definitely. And we've got somebody here that, that just became a racer last year and, um, or maybe the year before. So, so great. Gr- let's say Graydon's is going to go and race a mini truck. Mm-hmm. What is the most important thing that he needs to know about racing the mini truck mm-hmm. and the competition? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, for, well, for me, I was not used to suspensions. So that was a wonderful asset. Well, having the suspension compared to the junior late models um i definitely think like go with the flow like don't pinch it off i feel like that's one mistake um that i made early on it's just because you want to cut it but then you lose all your momentum right away um for your competition i feel like they're really great um guys to race with everyone races you quite fair um and then they also race you evenly if you give a little bit too much they'll give you a little bit right back. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as well, so as long as you play nicely, everyone will play nicely with you too. <laughs> That's a pretty good selling point, ain't it, Graydon? That sounds pretty yeah, good. It, it's great <laughs> advice because I, I was guilty of that too. Because being uh, very new to the skill set, mm-hmm. and also um, I, largely the cars that I drove were not on the high end of the horsepower scale. That I just felt like I needed to be out of the way, but it does as you say, if you, you really like and stay so, yeah. so tight to the inside, it really kills your lap. If you can just mm-hmm. like kind of let it drift out. And, and as you said before, let just let the vehicle kind of do what it wants to do while you're mm-hmm. doing what you want it to do as well. Mm-hmm. well. Yeah, of course. So I'm going to ask, okay, okay, I'm gonna ask before Go you ahead. get there, Graydon, cause I know we're going to ask the big, more big important questions. So I'm going to yeah, follow it on hypothetical coming. as well. All right, you've got an opportunity to race any division in Ontario at any track. Ooh. What are you going to go and do? I think I would like to try dirt. Oh, nice. okay. I would be fine doing, yeah, one of like the midgets, kind of midgets. It'd be something super different, but super cool. Like I love drifting in my daily, every day, especially with the <laughs> snow. <laughs> nice. So I would love to try dirt. I mean, something so different, especially with the open wheels. That's definitely something. Uh, Schwiegen, that's one close to oh, me. Yeah. So Schwiegen. Mm-hmm. You hear that, Clinton? Right here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's a marquee event. Uh, they're introducing Keisha Simic on the uh, PA, uh, bringing you out. What is going to be your intro tune? See, I love that you asked McKenna this question. So I actually have a top three that I couldn't narrow it down to. Oh, nice. Perfect. <laughs> So I like Welcome to the Jungle, Guns N' Roses. It's oh, such course. a good, like, iconic opening. Yeah, um, perfect. Start My Heart by Motley Crue, because that just gets me, like, so pumped up. Yeah. And a little yeah, we bit like that when you're out here. With Real Gone, Cheryl Crow. Just, like, because I just picture that yes. first opening. Oh, it's Very so good. Very cool. <laughs> nice. A little bit everywhere. <laughs> Those are pretty good choices, Great. And actually, that was really good. Kickstart My Heart is actually our theme mm. for SNS Live. So... It works good out choice. pretty good. We we like that uh, that uh, idea. Yeah, there. that's a great short list. Now, obviously, you've got some great people, some partners um, that get you to the racetrack each and every week. So here on the show, we like to give you an opportunity to do a shout out to all the people and all the partners that uh, will help you 
um, week in and week out. So here's your moment to uh, to thank all those that uh, helped you out. Yes, of course. Thank you. Um, definitely, obviously, a huge shout out to Ladies of the Oval um, for obviously being one of the reasons I'm on here today and for being the sponsorship winner of last year. I um, couldn't be more grateful for everything they're doing for us ladies out there. Obviously, a huge shout out to my dad. He is my crew chief. He's my like main person, my mechanic, everything I could ask for. Um, my mom, my sister, um, my boyfriend as well, who sometimes races with me too. <laughs> Um, he's great competition. Um, Byron Automotive <laughs> is also one of my sponsors. A huge shout out to them um, as well. Aisha, this is always um, so cool for us to get to learn a little bit more about amazing racers. And and luckily we get this month with Ladies of the Oval, we get to know even more. But I, I do want to point out that uh, it wasn't just because ladies of the oval that you're on there. You're on here because of your talent, second in place in points, doing this for a while. We want to thank you for coming thank on and joining you. us. And, and you're well deserving of all the accolades. And we hope the best for you in 2024. Hopefully we'll be out there and, and maybe Graydon will get it, get a chance and uh, we'll get to see at the, at the racetrack. I know he's going to be out there at full throttle, hopefully this season. So, um, yep. so definitely, definitely got to see, uh, see what we can, uh, Get out be around okay. a few times, yeah. Yes, definitely. Get some pointers yeah. beforehand. Yeah, maybe we get want to thank... track. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I want to thank Keisha Zimmick for joining us here on the Stickers and Scuffs podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in.